this tutorial, I'm going to run through the techniques used in the knitted knockers pattern and we are using the bottom up pattern for this tutorial. And before we get started, I have so much to say about knitted knockers. They are a great organization run entirely by volunteers and knitters. Knitters who knit the knitted knockers for them to give to uh, patients who have undergone either mastectomies or lumpectomies and in the healing process during the time that these people are healing they can't wear a medical rubberized prosthetic breast because the skin is too tender and it's um, the rubberized breast is, is too much against the skin so they can't wear a prosthetic unless they get knitted knockers, which are very soft and um, soft against the skin. They're made, there's a whole list of approved yarns that you can use that are, the yarns are chosen for durability, for uh, washability, and for softness. So I'm gonna have all kinds of links for you. I just want to say a little bit about the organization. Um, let me actually find glasses because I do have some of this stuff written down. Uh, actually, the way that I was introduced to Knitted Knockers is through the Very Pink Knits audio podcast. And if you click the little eye in the upper right hand corner, we have a whole episode where Casey interviewed Barb, the founder of Knitted Knockers, and you can learn a lot more about the organization that way. But I'm going to run through some of it here. Um, the organization gives away a thousand knockers a month. Uh, directly from knittedknockers.org, but then there are all kinds of local uh, drop-off areas that give to the local hospitals and to people who request them locally, so it's a lot more than a thousand a month. Um, I already said about the approved yarns, 100% volunteer organization, no one is ever charged for Knitted Knockers. Everyone is doing this for free. There's three way to, ways to help. You can knit them, you can share on social media about the organization to other knitters, or you can donate money. And when you make them, they look like this, and you don't need to stuff them. You can actually mail them just like this. And that's what I do. I stuffed this one, and I'm not, I'm not sure that I stuffed it the way that they would uh, at the organization, but I wanted to show you what they look like when they're stuffed. So you can stuff them, but I usually choose not to. Much easier to mail when they're not stuffed. And then the experts who know exactly how to stuff them, exactly how much stuffing, stuffing to put in there, let them do it. And I usually give a few dollars um, as a donation to cover postage and stuffing and whatever else so that my gift feels complete. But you don't have to. That's just something that I like to do. Um, most requests for knockers are for neutral colors, size B or larger, just keep that in mind. And on the website, the website has so much information and I'm really just running through the basics here. On the website, you can request knockers, you can get the free patterns, you can find local collection points. There's so much going on here. And I, I know people have so many questions about it that I wanna run through as much as I can in this intro. Now, there are several different patterns for knitted knockers, and I've always knit what's called top down, from nipple down, but when I talked with Barb, the founder of Knitted Knockers, she requested that I do a tutorial on bottom up, and people find that one a little bit easier because we start at, uh, we start with more stitches on the needle, on the double pointed needles, and then move up from there, and uh, people don't like to start with six stitches on the needle. Believe me, I didn't have to explain. I understood. So we're doing the bottom-up pattern, but they do have other patterns if you want to take a look. I'm going to be demonstrating this on double-pointed needles. We're going to have our discussion about double-pointed needles right now. People have it in their head that they don't like double-pointed needles. I would really like it if you gave them a try on this project, if you're one of those people. If you like double-pointed needles, you're gonna be like, hey, yeah, DPNs are perfect for this because we have, we have uh, the instructions are repeated three times and we have you know one needle for every time we repeat the section. I mean, it really makes sense for this, especially when you get down to just a few stitches. But I'll say this. If you prefer magic loop or flexi flips, flexible double pointed needles or short circulars won't really work for this. Magic loop or flexible double pointed needles will. You can, instead of separating the stitches into thirds, 
you do two thirds on one needle or one half of the cord and the other third on the other needle or other half of the cord and that and you can just put a stitch marker between the two on the one side. If you love magic loop then I'm sure that makes sense to you. Um, Okay, some of the yarns that I'm working with here, I have Kramer Tatami. This is one of the approved yarns. It's, um, it's nice to work with. I also have Paint Box. This is a uh, Cotton DK yarn. And they, the Paint Box yarn comes in really beautiful neutral colors. That's one of the reasons I like to work with them. I'm going to demonstrate two parts of the pattern. One is the just the regular one, the other one is the nipple pattern, there's a little nipple and it's a bit of I cord. I'm gonna demonstrate both of those. What else do I need to tell you? Cause I know people are gonna ask, cause every time I've posted on social media about knitted knockers, I get just so many questions from people. And it's like, I'll cover it all in the video. So I wanna make sure. Um, oh, you can use DK or sport weight yarn. I believe it is, right, right, right. DK or sport weight yarn. And in the pattern, I'm going to show you the, um, the different gauges and instructions for that. But make sure you're using an approved yarn. Also, I know what I was gonna say, whenever I make these, I always make two matching ones. And it, meaning that I use the same stitch count and knit the same size. And not everybody who requests knitted knockers is going to need two of them, but they will have one to wash and one to wear. They have two, they can use them as they like, and I think that makes the most sense. But if you get, as my friend called, second boob syndrome and you don't want a knitted second, a second one, I'm sure knitted knockers will take your donation regardless. Anyway, in the next section, we are going to start with what is probably the most difficult part of it, getting started on the double pointed needles, and that is coming up next. Okay, after all that talking in the first part, we are ready to get started. I'm going to be demonstrating on, um, I'm actually using a wool yarn, not an approved yarn for knitted knockers, and a bulky yarn, not a knitted, it's not an approved yarn, but, and bigger needles so that you can more easily see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we will take a look at a finished knocker. Now this is how I mail them in. I mail them in without stuffing and let the experts do the stuffing. But I went and had stuffed this one and I'm actually not sure if it's stuffed the way that they would do it in the org, but I did stuff it. And the reason um, you'll see in the pattern, we leave a long tail and we leave this part open is so they can stuff it. And this, if you pull on it, will actually tighten up and then it can loosen up again, which isn't quite as easy. That's why they ask you not to tighten it um, so that <clears throat> the stuffing can be removed and replaced for washing. Or I suppose it can be washed with just the stuffing in there because of the kind of stuffing it is. So um, I knit these in pairs, and that means that if someone needs two, they have two, or they have one for washing, one for wearing. And this one is knit with the Paint Box Cotton DK. And I also have the Kramer yarn here as well. Both are approved yarns. Um, let's take a look at the pattern real quick because the pattern is maybe not like a lot of patterns that you've seen before and that it's, it's simple and it is, it's a simple pattern is why there isn't a whole lot to this. Um, let, let me run through on an actual knocker here. This is the bottom up pattern. So we cast on here, we increase in three places until we get to the fullest part. We do two purl rounds to create the turn, the, the difference between the, the top and the bottom piece. Then we decrease in three parts and finish up um, uh, and just run the needle through the last few stitches to tighten it up. And the pattern covers all different sizes. And I, I talked about in the intro what they're looking for. Let me see if I can find that again so I can say it again. The Knitted Knockers gets the most requests for, uh, now I'm not seeing it, oh, for neutral colors size B or larger. And I've knit these, the ones that I've knit to um, the stitch count for size B. So 
On this um, document, you'll see the materials that you need. I'm going to be demonstrating on double pointed needles, sport or DK weight. Um, and let's just get to the pattern here because you can read all that. Starting with a 20 inch tail, cast on loosely 15 stitches and divide between three needles. That's what we're going to demonstrate here first. Then this is the increase part. Knit to the last stitch KFB, which is a, a one stitch increase, knit front back. Um, repeat for needle two and three, three stitches increased. So we'll have it on the three needles. This is why DPNs are actually really handy for this because the pattern is separated in thirds and you can have one third on each needle. And, the, and uh, whatever you do on the first needle, you do on this, the other two. I've got needles flying all over the place. Um, and then when we get down, oh, sorry. Round two, KFB, knit to last stitch, KFB. So we have one increase on round one and two increases on round two. Then you repeat that across the other two needles. Don't worry, I'm gonna go through all of this. Then for each cup size, we have a different stitch count, right? Um, like for instance, A cup, it gives you a stuffed diameter, but what we're really looking at here is the stitch count. The first number is for the stitch count in sport weight, the gauge in sport weight. The second count is the gauge in DK weight yarns. And then this is what's really handy because this, I, this is the number that I always use, 24 stitches or 22 stitches per needle. It's a lot quicker to count just one needle and not all of the stitches around. And that's what you'll get for each cup size. And then the last page of the pattern has um, cup size is larger than DD or E. And there are a few more uh, uh, details here for the different sizes and the stitch counts, but we're gonna keep it simple here. The top piece, and you'll see without the nipple, I've got um, a sample that I'll show you. You get a little nipple that you can, you can knit out of I-cord and attach down. I'm gonna demonstrate that too. The top piece without nipple, we have the, the um, Decrease schedule for that, again, it's kind of different from a lot of patterns we see because it's just very simple. And then the instructions for the top piece with nipple and then the final step to finish. And there's a second page with more information about the colors you're using and everything else, and that's important to read. You know, there is a lot of information about knitted knockers and how they want things done, but they're able, you know, with the approved yarn and with these approved patterns, they're able to guarantee a certain quality to what they're, what they're donating. So that's why we want to be sure to follow along with what they say. All right, first thing we're gonna get started with, we're gonna knit through the first part of this together. And I'm going to be using thicker yarn and needles because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh oh, I've got a dog crying downstairs. I'm here we go. I've got a dog barking downstairs. I'm supposed to remember to close those blinds before I come up here to record. Okay, I'm leaving a really long tail and making a slip knot. And I want it to be 20 inches when I'm done. I'm just leaving a really long tail and I'll cut it to 20 inches if I have to. Now, I have already released a slow motion video for casting on to DPNs like this. So I'll give you a link here to that video, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this regular speed. I know everybody wants me to have the dogs in the video. You just, you don't get to see them this time. <laughs> So I do the thumb cast on to five stitches. I could cast on all 15 and just transfer them over to the other two needles, but here's how I'm going to do it um, onto each needle. I'm going to do my th thumb wrap just like I'm going to cast on to the same needle, but put an empty needle in my right hand. Ta-da! You wanna be sure to give that a good tug to eliminate the drag between the needles. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. My goodness. Ta-da. Okay, 
them all cast on here. Before I get started, I want to make sure that all the knots are lined up inside. <laughs> Gosh, I thought she was done. I am sorry. I like to have my first needle here under the other one. That's just a preference that I have. I'm going to move these stitches down to the tip of the needle. Put um, my working yarns over here. My first stitch is the, the, really the, the slip knot. For round one, I'm going to knit to last stitch and KFB. As soon as I knit that first stitch, we are joined in the round. In this stitch, I'm going to KFB, which means knit the stitch normally, but don't pull that old stitch off the left needle. Swing the tip of the needle around to the back loop of that stitch, wrap it, and pull it through. I'm going to do that a couple more times, but I'll also give you a link here to my KFB slow motion video if this increase is new to you. So I'm knitting to the last stitch, just repeating what I did before. KFB. Knit it normally, swing the tip of the needle around to the back loop of the stitch, wrap it and pull it through. And one more. Okay, I'm glad to be done with the cast on row. I know that I'm back at the beginning of the round because my tail end is here, right? between the two stitches. I also worked that increase row three times. Now round two is the same except for we have an increase on the first and the last stitch. So I'm going to KFB. Knit to the last stitch. KFB. Same thing on the second needle. KFB. Knit to the last stitch, KFB. And the last one. KFB. Knit to the last stitch. KFB. So that is really the whole increase section repeating those two rounds. Now I have enough on the needle here. I can go ahead and put a safety pin or a clippy marker between the at, at the beginning of the round between the last stitch of the round and the first stitch of the round so that it's clear when I'm knitting where, um, where I am. Here's one more thing I want to talk tell you about. You can, of course, use a row counter to keep yourself on track, right? So every odd number row is repeating row one or round one. Every even number is repeating round two. But inevitably, you're going to have to set it down and pick it up again and wonder where you are. So let's talk about that because the KFB stitch gives us a really good clue as to where we are. We're going to take a very close look. You see the first stitch is, has a V. The second stitch looks like it has a little scarf around its neck. And the third stitch is a V. This little stitch right here, the scarf around the neck, is a pearl bump. And a KFB gives, it's important that you hear this. It's important that Dolly is quiet. This um, scarf around the neck means that on this first stitch in the last round, I did a KFB, which means the last round was uh, round two. So I'm ready to work round one. And 
you won't see this little scarf around the neck on the second stitch if the last round you worked was round one. Okay, so you set it down, you put it in your knitting bag, you pull it back up, what round am I on? Do you see the little scarf? Then it means you work round one. If you don't see that, it's a round two. Okay, I think we've got that. Let me look at my list. What else are we covering in this one? Okay, that was all I was gonna cover here. Now, what you want to do is repeat those two rounds until you get up to the stitch counts here that you see. And let's talk a little bit more about these stitch counts because you'll see that there's an asterisk after a couple of these. Certain sizes need to repeat round one one more time to get the desired number of stitches. So in, in knitting patterns, when it says repeat these rounds, it means working round one and round two as a set. You, if you work round one, you always work round two. But the A cup size and the C cup size and the D cup, well, it looks like there's quite a few asterisks here. You have to work round one one more time without working round two. And then <clears throat> there's another asterisk here. See notes for larger sizes. Each size goes up about half an inch in diameter. Sizing is a bit of an art. Looser knit stitch will stretch more when stuffed. Stuff knockers should measure the diameters listed above, measured straight across the back from point to the mid opposite side. So you're measuring from here to here. Okay, but really at the organization, they can stuff it and measure it and they will know that I'm leaving that part to the experts. I'm just doing the knitting. Okay. Um, okay, that's all we have for this section. Just keep knitting around and around until you get to the stitch comp, uh, number that you need for the size you're knitting. And we're gonna move to a smaller sample next time. It won't be quite this big. And this is definitely not an approved yarn. That's coming up. And that's how you're going to get started. Continue with your increases. And in the next section, well, we're gonna do the rest of it. We're going to do the purl turn, finishing, weaving the ends, everything else. And that's coming up next. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next section. You have something that looks like this. Uh, it gets easier from here because we're gonna have fewer and fewer stitches. Let's get started. Okay, once you get to the stitch count for the size that you're knitting, um, you'll have the right number of stitches all the way around and the right number of stitches on each needle and the pattern is nice enough to tell us what those are. You want to do the purl turn rows that kind of separate and make the, the top distinct from the bottom, right? This is really easy. I just want to demonstrate it because I know that people have tension issues with things like this, especially on double pointed needles. So you're going to pull your yarn. I'm at the beginning of my round. You're going to pull your yarn forward and you're just going to purl. But that first stitch on the needle, you really want to give, you want to pull the yarn back and really give that a tug to eliminate the gap between um, the, the needles. The next stitch is not as crucial. You'll finish your way across the needle. Did I mention that I'm using um, Kramer Yarns Tatami DK in playtime color? Okay. I know she sounds like she's being tortured, but it's just a squirrel. It's just a squirrel. She is being tortured by a squirrel, by having to look at a squirrel. And my studio is unfortunately open to a staircase that is very close to the window where she's barking. I want to show this one more time, which is why you're watching me purl and listening to <laughs> my whippet bark. My Basenji's right next to me. Basenji's don't bark, and so that's why he's also just a calmer dog. Okay, so I'm going, I'm purling from here to here, and 
it's just like any other purling, it's just that be, there's a chance of having a pretty decent gap between those two needles. So you work the first purl stitch, pull the yarn back, and my goodness, pull the yarn back and really give it a tug. Like I could, I could shout, you know, at her and say, "Dolly, shush!" But I'm, I'm wearing a microphone. I know if I do that, it'll be louder for you. Okay, and one more time. I'm sorry if you're watching this with the volume on and dogs in the room because they all just went nuts right now. Pearl that stitch and then really give it a tug by pulling backwards on, by pulling the yarn back. Okay, that's the pearl turn. You're gonna work this round twice. So you have two rounds of pearls before you get into the decrease section and I will demonstrate the decrease section, and it's the same for whether you're working the nipple or not. The most of the decrease section is exactly the same. It's just the very, the way you kind of finish it off. It's different. But I'm going to get us to the beginning of the round, and we're going to pretend that I worked two purl rounds. Okay, so all we're going to do here is knit to the last two stitches and knit two together. And knit two together is the easiest decrease. When you were a brand new knitter, you probably worked knit two togethers accidentally before you even knew what you were doing, like on your first scarf or something. <laughs> So I will demonstrate it, but chances are you know how to do a knit two together. But if you, I will give you a link here to my knit two together video. Last two stitches. Knit those two stitches together as one, a one stitch decrease. And you work that on each needle all the way around. You don't have to pay attention to which round you're on because there's only one round to repeat over and over again. You repeat that until you have three stitches left, one stitch on each needle, and you, um, uh, oops, I'm sorry, you have six stitches left, two stitches on each needle. You cut the yarn and weave it through the remaining stitches. And um, I'm going to demonstrate that more. Well, let me get over here to this. Here we are with the how to finish off the knitted knocker with the nipple, but this is what it's going to look like when you finish with when you're not knitting the nipple. You're going to cut your yarn, and my working yarn comes out of this stitch. This is the beginning of my round. I'm just going to thread that yarn onto a tapestry needle and through those stitches, and then we're all going to be caught back up here in just a minute because I want to demonstrate how to work the nipple. I have to work one more decrease round for this one. And what I'm going to have one stitch on each needle, but I'm going to need all three stitches that are left on one needle. So I'm just going to do my best here to <laughs> just I cord, you really do want to be on DPNs. I'm 
I'm really wrenching these stitches to get them on the same needle. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Okay, now the way that we work I cord is your working yarn is coming from over here, but we're going to knit this stitch with the working yarn. So it's kind of going to kind of be drug across the back. We want to work I cord for three rows. I suppose it's rounds. Okay, so my working yarn's coming from the left stitch. I slide the needle over and knit those three stitches. This is I cord. If you've never worked it before, this is how we do I cord. My working yarn's over here. Slide everything to the other end. Okay, that was it. Now I'm going to cut this yarn, leaving a nice tail. It says eight inches. And thread this onto a tapestry needle. And I'm going to go through these stitches the same way I did with the I cord, by sliding it to the, the stitches to the other end of the needle. And tighten that up. And now this part is a little more artistic, I'd say, because we want to fasten this down in so that it's not, you know, sticking out. Let me show you my finished one. It doesn't make that much of a, a nipple there. It's, and it's, it's tight down. It's not sticking up. So that's what we want to do. So we can twist it around. Let me just get this tacked down. Poke this in. And I'm working through the little hole in the back, which doesn't give me a lot of room to work, but oops, how about I do this on camera? <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not doing anything too fancy. I'm just tacking this down. Okay, that should do it. That is tacked down. Now the, um, we're back to the way this will work whether you're working the nipple or not because I'm going to weave in this end. So I'm going to pull the bottom kind of through that hole and it does, you, if you stretch out this hole a little bit it doesn't matter because we're going to fix that too. And this is the way I like to weave in cotton ends anytime I'm working cotton ends. I'm going to weave it in just to get it away from where it's uh, where it originated. And now I want to untwist the plies. And this is a four ply yarn. So I'm going to twist it two and two. and thread two of those plies back onto the needle. And then just take this just a half a stitch away somewhere, just so that the two plies are kind of coming from different places. Now when I, whoops, I've caught up on something. Now when I tie this in a knot, it's actually gonna work because it's tied around something. So I tie a knot again and I like to do a third one and really give it a tug just shy of breaking the yarn right really tight and then you can be confident that that is secure you can cut those ends short okay so that's done and the last thing we're doing here 
is <clears throat> to, uh, we're going to stitch around this hole so that it becomes something that can be tightened up and loosened. And this here is the beginning. I'm going to leave that there. And you do this on um, for every knitted knocker, regardless of whether you knit the nipple or not. The instructions say to, let's get this just right. We've cast on tail through every other cast on stitch. And they say, do not cinch up. They say that in capital letters. So our cast on row looks like a series of V's, right? It's coming out right here. I'm going to skip that one and go under both legs of the next V. And I'm doing it from front to back, so I'll just be consistent with that. Skip that one. Go under both legs there. Skip that one. Skip that one. Skip that one. Skip that one. And I'm, I made the mistake of not leaving the clipping marker in and then wondering, where did I start? <laughs> so that's why I leave it in now. I'll do one more. And that's done. I'm not going to cinch it up, but trust me, when you pull this, this will all cinch up together. I'm going to leave the long tail for the folks that knitted knockers to shorten or whatever they want to do with it. This, they probably end up with a lot of clippy markers in their collection. I'll remove my clippy markers, those are mine, and send this set off. Actually, I think I'll have three sets to send off because of this tutorial. Let me check my notes. We last thing we had to show was weaving in the end, and that was it. And there we go. That's it. <laughs> Make another one. Um, many thanks to Barb, who uh, the founder of Knitted Knockers, who answered a lot of my questions for this tutorial. And many thanks to the people who volunteer and knit knockers. It's a great organization who's ser that's serving a lot of women. You can read actual stories from women on the Knitted Knockers website. And of course, I'm going to give links to everything in the video description field, including the pattern that I worked from, free pattern, of course. And if you click the little eye in the upper right-hand corner, I'll also have a link to my website. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I hope this video helps you knit a lot of knockers. Good luck.